Hey guys, it's Megan, and today I'm back with another things to do when you're bored video. This time, I'll be showing you a few creative things to do this summer. The ideas in this video are mostly craft projects, but I definitely encourage you guys to try to get outside and do stuff with your friends as more places start opening up. But for those days when it's raining or you're just chilling at home, I got you. The first idea that I have for you guys is to make some origami seashells. For this project, all you need is a post-it note. And if you don't have post-it notes, you could just cut a piece of paper into a square. Start by sticking the post-it somewhere and peeling it back up a few times to make it a little bit less sticky. Make sure that the sticky part is at the top and fold the paper in half. Carefully unfold the paper and bring the bottom corners up to the center line. Then fold this part down like this. Repeat this on the other side. Then fold this little triangle at the bottom up like this. Fold the paper so that this edge meets the center line. Then fold it back like this. Repeat this on the other side. Flip the post-it over, then fold this edge up to meet the center line. And again, repeat this on the other side. Carefully peel apart the edges. Now we almost have a seashell. Flip the post-it back over to the sticky side and fold down the top corners. Flip it back over and you're done. How you use your seashells is up to you. I made nine shells all together and glued them onto a watercolor background. This is another fun technique to do when you're bored. You take a few washable markers, scribble all over a Ziploc bag, then spray either your paper or the bag with water. Put the bag on top of the paper, and when you peel it up, you'll have this nice watercolor effect. You could also glue the seashells onto a piece of string, maybe add some beads and make a little garland. Or you could just tape them up wherever you want. The next idea is to make some smashed flower art. This one was actually pretty fun. First, you're gonna wanna go outside and try to find some flowers. Okay, so I googled it and these are technically weeds, but you know, close enough. Then grab a hammer and some paper. Watercolor paper will work the best since it's a little bit thicker, but you can experiment with any type of paper that you have. Take a sheet of paper and arrange your flowers face down. Put another sheet of paper on top and literally just smash it with a hammer. Take the top piece of paper off and remove any petals that are left on there. My original plan was to like smash flowers all over the whole page, but I realized that I didn't really have any other flowers in my yard and these weren't even flowers, apparently. Um, so to turn it into a more finished piece, I outlined each flower to help them stand out a little more. I cut those out, then used some of this paper that came in an Amazon box to make a little envelope. I cut out some backgrounds that I liked from some old magazines and ripped them up to create a background. Then, I glued the envelope on top and glued in the flowers. I drew stems coming from the flowers to make it look like they were kind of like growing out of the envelope. I always say that you don't need expensive supplies to make art, and I always love finding ways to use things that would have been thrown away. This was a super fun technique, and I definitely want to try it again with real flowers. If you're a crafty person like me, you probably have everything that you need for this next project. I always have some extra acrylic paint lying around, and paint pouring is an awesome project for summer. To make this, you'll need some acrylic paint, glue, plastic wrap, and something to paint on. Some other supplies that are helpful are plastic cups, popsicle sticks, a straw, and some gloves. First, we need to make a pouring medium. To do this, mix equal parts of glue and water. The pouring medium will thin out the paint a little, and it makes it easier to spread out. Then, mix equal parts of the pouring medium with some acrylic paint. I wanted to do a beach scene, so I mixed three tannish colors for the sand and three shades of blue plus some white for the ocean. This next step is optional, but for the ocean colors, I put in a little bit of WD-40. This will just help create those little bubbles in the water. To help sort of contain the mess from the paint pouring, I glued two plastic cups to the bottom of a cardboard box. This will just catch any extra paint. For the sand, I layered all of the sand colors into a cup. Take that cup and pour it over the bottom left corner of the canvas. You can kind of tilt the canvas back and forth to spread out the paint. For the ocean, I just poured each color directly onto the canvas. I started with the lightest shade of blue and worked my way to the darkest. I put a piece of plastic wrap over the blue paint, then pulled it up towards the upper right corner. I poured a little more light blue paint where the water meets the sand and blew on it with a straw to blend it in. Then I poured on some white paint using that same technique with the straw to make it look like a wave crashing. 
Honestly, I had no idea what I was doing, and I kind of just messed around with it until I ended up with this. I used the leftover paint to decorate this wooden tray from Dollar Tree. That's another thing, if you can like drive or if you just live near a Dollar Tree, they have a bunch of little wooden things like this that are perfect to decorate when you're bored. I kind of like this one better because at this point I actually knew what I was doing. You can literally paint pour on anything though. If you don't have a canvas or anything like that, you could use a shoebox lid, a piece of cardboard, really whatever you have on hand. I don't know what it is about summer, but it always puts me in the mood to make jewelry. For this flower necklace, I used some embroidery thread, a needle, some mini pony beads, and some 6mm pearl beads. First, cut a piece of string and tie a knot at the end. The length of the string is up to you depending on if you want this to be a necklace, a bracelet, an anklet, you know, whatever. Just make it longer than you think that you'll need. Tape the knotted end to the table and thread a needle onto the other end. String on a few beads. I did five of these light yellow ones. To make the flowers, I strung on four blue pony beads. You could use pretty much any beads for this, as long as the petals are more of like a pony bead type shape and the center is a round bead like these pearls. Take your needle and string it through the first blue bead. Pull the string through and you'll start to see that flower shape. String on three more blue beads and bring the needle up through this bead. Pull the string tight and you'll have a flower. I ended up putting three light yellow beads in between each flower and alternating between light blue and dark blue petals. You can use any type of closure that you want. I tied a lobster clasp and a jump ring to each end to turn mine into a choker. I love how this turned out. I think it's so cute and I definitely wanna make these in more colors. Another super simple craft to try when you're bored is one of these scrape paintings. Now you can do just like a simple painting where you just put a bunch of random dots of paint on the page, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. If you draw something on the page before you apply the paint, you can get some really cool effects. I just drew some easy smiley faces. For the scraper tool, I used a piece of cardboard. I covered the edge of the cardboard with duct tape to make it smooth, but this is optional. I put a line of white paint at the top of the page and covered each smiley face with a blob of paint. Then I took the cardboard scraper tool that I made and I just smushed down the paint. And as you can see, some of the colors worked better than others. If I were to do this again, I'd probably thin the paint by mixing it with a little bit of water first. I kind of cheated there at the end and like wiped some of the paint off of the faces with my finger, but you get the idea. One of my favorite summer crafts when I was a kid was always making stuff with perler beads. I swear, I had one of those big buckets of them when I was younger, and they still haven't run out. If you have some of these lying around, this is the perfect craft. All you do is cover a baking sheet with parchment paper, set some beads on top, and put it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 5 minutes. Now you'll have a bunch of miniature beads, perfect for making any type of jewelry. I turned mine into another choker. I figured I made bracelets in the last video, so I need some necklaces to go with them. I did something similar in a video last summer, except instead of putting the beads in the oven, I ironed them. And ironing them will make them a little bit flatter and more like uneven, which is perfect for making fake puka shell necklaces. Let me know in the comments, have you ever made anything with perler beads? Like I said, I was obsessed with these when I was younger. Apparently I was really feeling the bead crafts this week, so I'm sorry if you don't have beads, but the last idea is to make a DIY sunglasses strap. For this one, all you need is some not stretchy string and some beads. First, cut a piece of string that's a little longer than you want your sunglasses strap to be. To make the part that goes on the sunglasses, you're gonna wanna tie a knot like this. You really can't see what I'm doing at all, so here's the diagram that I followed. This will create a loop that you can slide up and down. Tie a regular knot a little bit below this loop, then string on your beads. You can use any type of beads that you want. I use some more of those pearl beads and some mini pony beads. Once you have it to the length that you want, tie another normal knot right after the last bead. Then tie another one of those like sliding loop knots at this end as well. Which, side note, that's like really not what this knot is actually called, but you know, I'm not trying to give anyone any ideas, so yeah. Try to make it as even as possible. Cut off the excess string on both sides and seal the knot with some clear nail polish. To put the sunglasses on, just slide the loop open like this. Slip in the sunglasses and slide the knot back up to tighten it. I keep seeing these everywhere and I'm sorry, I kind of still think that they make you look like a grandma, but I can see how they would be convenient if you're like at an amusement park or tubing or, or kayaking or something. Let's be real, I cannot pull this off, but I know that some of you guys can. 
So that was everything for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Make sure to let me know which idea was your favorite. And if you have any ideas for future things to do in your board videos, my merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you guys later. Bye!